It's donut time. These are some super tasty pumpkin donuts with a delicious maple icing. We're going to take you every step of the way showing you how we make these. You can check out the description after the video for the full list of ingredients. Let's get rolling. Julie here is starting out with one and a half cups of all-purpose flour going right into a nice large mixing bowl. This gets followed up with one and a half teaspoons of baking powder right into that same bowl. We're going to grab here a quarter teaspoon of baking soda right into the bowl. We'll move on here to the pumpkin pie spice. We're going to add two teaspoons of the pumpkin pie spice. Perfect. Here we're going to grab our salt and add a half a teaspoon right into the mix. And then we're going to give this a mix of all the ingredients. After we get that mixed up, we're going to set that aside. We're now going to shift over to the wet ingredients by melting four tablespoons of butter and adding that to a new bowl, followed by a quarter cup of vegetable oil, and pretty soon we're gonna need a third of a cup of buttermilk. Julie likes to make her own. Save yourself some money. Don't buy the buttermilk expensive in the store. To do this, add one tablespoon of vinegar into a one cup measuring cup and fill the rest of that up with milk. And then you just let that sit for five minutes. You'll have your very own buttermilk. Here we're adding one large egg to that bowl, and then we're gonna also need one egg yolk to add to the bowl. Here we'll watch Julie and how she actually separates that egg yolk out from the egg. That's something I can't do, that's for sure. All right, very cool. Now we're gonna add one cup of packed brown sugar. Next up, we're gonna grab that can of pumpkin puree. Julie likes to use the disinfectant wipes to wipe off the top before she opens those cans. I think she's seen a lot of videos that talk about how disgusting those cans are, so she likes to be extra careful. All right, so we've got that open here, so we just need one cup of that pumpkin puree, just like that, and we're gonna load that into our bowl here. All right, getting every last drop there. Now we're gonna go and get one teaspoon of vanilla extract and we're gonna add that to the bowl. And now we just need to go back to our buttermilk, which has been sitting for five minutes, so it should be set to go. We're gonna get a third of a cup of this. And you can also certainly use a third of a cup from the store. Now let's give those wet ingredients a nice thorough stirring here. And to do a better job here, Julie's gonna switch out to using a whisk. See, in the last video, you couldn't even spell whisk right. It's W-H-I-S. <laughs> oh, great. Now she tells me. But hey, just between us, don't tell her that I did that in much more than just one video. Well, at least now I know. Oi. Well, we do have that fully whisked now, so we'll add the dry ingredients in there. And we're going to stir this up nice and fully until you see those dry ingredients disappear into that mixture. And I hope we don't have to use a whisk again here. But hey, if you know how to spell whisk, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and maybe even give us a like. And that can serve as my reminder on how to spell whisk. All right, now you can see how this is getting nice and thoroughly mixed in there together. So that's what it should look like as we move on to our next step here. But first, this is a perfect time to start preheating that oven to 350 degrees. So here we're gonna grab the donut pans that we use and we're gonna put a link to these in the description and fully spray those with canola oil. So here we're gonna move on to pouring the mixture into each one of the molds for the donuts. And this can be a little messy if you're doing it this way, but we have a better option for you. We're big fans of those Ziploc bags, so we can actually get the mixture poured into one of those bags fully. Then we can simply seal that up, squeeze out a little bit of the air, and Pete seems to approve. We can simply move that mixture into one of the corners and cut off that little corner, that'll serve as our nozzle. Then you can control the flow nice and evenly by choosing the pressure you're squeezing at. Just like that, that looks great. That's a much better way to go about this. I'm glad I thought of it. Yeah, I know you don't believe that. The guy that can't even spell whisk. <laughs> but there we go, Julie's wrapping up the last one. Now she'll just go back with what she has left over and add to some of the ones that don't have as much in there. And here's a quick look over both of the pans. Looks like everything is dispersed quite nicely. We're gonna place this into the oven. So here our oven is fully preheated to 350 degrees. So we're gonna place both trays onto the middle rack and time that out for 18 minutes of baking. 
and we're going to use this time to make our icing, starting off with a half a stick of butter in the microwave in a covered microwave safe dish and cook that on high for three minutes. And when that's done, we've got ourselves some brown butter, which actually smells pretty darn good. Now, since we have an oven that's about 20 years old, Julie likes to be sure that everything bakes evenly. So she rotates everything that she bakes halfway through. We're at that nine minute point. So she gives that a quick rotation. Now we'll continue working on the icing. We'll grab a half a cup of packed brown sugar and add that to our brown butter. And then we're gonna get two tablespoons of buttermilk and add that right in there as well. Julie is getting pretty excited about something there. All right, we're gonna grab one tablespoon of maple syrup and we're gonna add that into our mixture here. And here comes the pop quiz for me. We've got a whisk. I think I got it spelled right. We're gonna whisk, <laughs> we're gonna whisk this until it's fully combined. And then we're gonna bring that back to the microwave and microwave that on high for two minutes. But for every 30 seconds, you're gonna to wanna to stop and give that a quick whisk and then keep it going for another 30 seconds. And then after the full two minutes, you're gonna to wanna to remove it. And yep, you guessed it, give it another whisk. And at this point, this mixture is smelling really, really good here. All right, we're gonna put that into the bowl and boy, that looks delicious. Oh, the oven just went off. Our donuts are done baking, there it is. We're gonna take these out and let these cool. These are gonna sit in the baking pan for five minutes and let those cool for five minutes. There's our timer. We're all set to go there. All right, let's get back to our icing by adding a teaspoon of vanilla extract into the bowl. And this gets followed up with one and a half cups of powdered sugar. And at this point, I think she just keeps using that whisk just to mess with me. But there we go, we're gonna whisk this again. Make sure that powdered sugar gets fully mixed into the icing. And this is getting quite a bit thicker here, so we're gonna wanna get rid of that whisk, <laughs> thankfully. And we're gonna move on to a rubber spatula. And that's how you can finish up mixing this up and kinda judging to see how thick this is. Which, this was a little bit thick, so we're gonna add a little splash of milk just to soften this up just a bit. And here you can just use your own judgment to add just a little bit more milk if you need to and make that as thick or thin as you want it to be. That's looking pretty good for us. We're gonna take those donuts that have been cooling and we're gonna empty those out onto our cooling rack just like that. And then we're gonna start applying the icing. Now here we like the icing to be a little bit thicker. So we're gonna try the first option here with that thicker icing and just using a knife just to spread that out there this again can get quite messy as you can see, uh, but if you're certainly serving for your family, this works just fine. But we do have a second option here for you, which makes it a little bit cleaner looking. If you grab another Ziploc bag, you can add that icing right into that Ziploc bag like we did before, squeeze it into the corner, and again, cut your spout, and then you just gently squeeze that icing through that hole, and then you can have this evenly dispersed on your donuts, and heck, make up your own little designs on the donuts as you see fit. And here's the design that Julie settled on, just kind of a nice little flower pattern on this donut. She really liked that look. And we'd love to see your comments on your experience with making these donuts. Be sure to check out our apple cider donuts, which you can see by clicking on this video right here. And on the right side of the screen, we got two more options for you as well. Thanks for watching, and God bless. Ba-da-da!